Welcome to Trans Theories, a show where we talk about everything Transformers. I'm Jason, today we're going to be talking about the various minions of Soundwave. So in the original Transformers G1 cartoon show, Soundwave had many minions. Most famously, Ravage, Laserbeak, Ratbat, Rumble, and Frenzy. But not all these guys made it into Bayformers, but they got replaced by some amazing bots. So in the first Transformers movie, the first minion that we saw was Frenzy. Now a lot of new goers of the series, and even myself at one point, thought that Frenzy was Barricade's minion, because Soundwave was nowhere to be seen. But actually, Frenzy belongs to Soundwave. And fun fact, Soundwave is planned to be in the Transformers 1 movie, but they did not know how to execute his character properly, so they wanted to add a distant cousin of his into the film. Unlike the other minions that are going to be on this list, Frenzy had the most screen time and, to me, he had the most character. His main weapons of choice were his blasters, his blades that he used to download data from Air Force One, and his CD discs that he could shoot out of his chest, and he most likely acquired these weapons when he scanned his alternate mode, a GPX boombox. And Frenzy's main point in the film was to help Barricade locate the Allspark Shard and Megatron with it. Also at one point in the film, Frenzy got decapitated and he could still live. While later in the film, Frenzy found himself face to face with the Allspark Cube. And if meeting the Allspark, the Allspark gave Frenzy's body back. But later when Frenzy was trying to kill some humans, he overshot one of his CDs, which caused it to ricochet back at his face, killing him, which led to a fun cameo in Revenge of the Fallen. The next minion that we see is in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and it's Ravage. Now Ravage was a very interesting character because he was a vessel for two different characters, but we'll get to that later. So Ravage in the film was sent by Soundwave to retrieve the Allspark Shard, and that was Ravage's main point of the film. And once he retrieved the Allspark Shard, he wanted some of the Constructicons to revive their leader. Ravage's weapons of choice were his blasters that were on his hips, which resemble a lot of his G1 counterpart. Also, besides trying to get the Allspark Shard, he also tried to help Skipjack take down Bone B. And when he was killed by B, he left his green gop behind, which I like to call Nickelodeon Gak. Now we really know where Nick gets their gak from. And sadly, Ravage's carcass was used as a whip to slap Skipjack. And while writing this script, I watched the full scene of Bone B versus Skipjack and Ravage, and Sam says something very odd. I hope you guys could explain it for me. How stupid are you? Now next minion that we see is also in Revenge of the Fallen, and it's the Microcons. Now it's not stated that the Microcons are Soundwave's minions, but because they came out of Ravage and Ravage came out of Soundwave, we can say that they are most likely Soundwave's minions. Now not much is known about these little guys, but what we do know is they all share the same body type and their alternate mode is a ball bearing. But the main thing we know about these guys is that they can all combine to form the Intimidating Reedman. Now Reedman may not have any weapons, but he can angle himself in such a way that can make him transparent. And he can slice through a full human in military armor with ease. And basically after a few more shots of Ravage, he was never seen again. He didn't even get killed. He's probably right behind you as you watch this exact video. The next minion that we see is also in Revenge of the Fallen, and it's Scapple, or what a lot of fans like to call him, the Doctor. Now he was a very interesting character, because, like the Microcons, he also came out of Ravage, which means he's related to Soundwave. Also, Scapple had a very distinct design because he looked like a spider. And for you guys who care about alternate modes, his alternate mode is an AO603 lens meter. And this will be important later. Now Scapple does not have any weapons that would hurt Autobots, but he does have a few that would hurt humans. One, his legs of course because they are like sharp little knives, and two, what looks like to be a little saw blade that comes out from his back. But besides these weapons, Scapple had some counterparts that could be also Soundwave's minions. And if you know the names of these guys, please tell me, but for now, the placeholder name is going to be Insecticon. Now on a last note, you may have seen Scapple in Dark of the Moon. But there was definitely more than just one scapel, and according to the TF Wiki, all these scapels are called lens meter drones. And they all share the exact same robot mode and alternate mode as scapel, but it's unclear if the main scapel was among them. Now moving on to our next minion that was featured in Dark of the Moon, and by far the most creepiest, Laserbeak. Now Laserbeak can be connected to Soundwave because he is seen on Soundwave in the African scene, and not to mention he's on his arm. Now in my book, Laserbeak by far is the best out of the bunch, and he was also like a spy. His weapons of choice were two blasters like his G1 counterpart, but they're under his wings, while the G1 has him over his wings. Now what's very interesting about Laserbeak is, he's the first quadruple changer I've ever seen in the Transformers Cinematic Universe. He can transform into a Toll Television, a Canon Color Image Class, MF244DW Wireless Laser Printer, I wonder why they have laser in the name, a Bang & O Fusion BO Soundboard 900, and lastly, somehow he transforms into a pink Bone Bee. 
And of him turning into all these things that have different colors, is where in the world does he get all this pink from? Because all of the scenes that we see him in, he is gray. And it does not make no sense at how he can transform into pink and even turn into bone beef tires on his back. And sadly, by the end of the film, Laserbeak was somehow killed by Sam, out of all people. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new about the Transformers Cinematic Universe. As always, if you're new to Trans Theories, don't forget to subscribe to join the Theorist Nation. Welp, this has been Trans Theories, signing off. Is your daddy home? No, no! A pleasure working with you.